BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Are you saving for your child's college education? If so, consider a 529 plan. To find your options, visit savingforcollege.com. You will find a comprehensive list of other states' plans along with details, rankings, tools, and calculators. That's savingforcollege.com. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. With Farmers, you could get savings just for becoming a customer. It's a little extra something. So to tell you about it, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. Precious baby giggles. (laughs) When you switch to Farmers, you could save an average of $437 on your home insurance. And that's a whole lot of something, baby. Ah, get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Based on average nationwide annual savings survey data July 2020 to 21. Underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Products not available in every state. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Tomorrow at 6 p.m., join me for this year's I'm Listening special, and it's a two-hour program talking about mental health awareness. Uh, It is a very important conversation to have, man. And uh, we've got members of Cage the Elephant, Duff from Guns N' Roses. Nikki Six joins us. Chris Cornell's daughter, Lily. uh, She's got a new mental health podcast. So a lot of folks are speaking out, and that's what I'm Listening is all about because talk has the power to save lives. If you want more information, just go to imlistening.org. Let's play B-Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah! Surrounded by a squeeze name. B-Mix. Don't be a loser. Whoa! B-Mix. You're a loser. It is time. Time to be mix It is time to turn up more tequila. Watch out for what? Yeah, it's almost seven. Have yourself a drink. I mean, <laughs> unless you're like commuting or something. Most people are working from home, so you can drink at home. Yeah. It'll work out. Mix it into your coffee. Yeah. Ooh, uh, tequila coffee. I'm not sure I'd be sure I should be taking advice from any of you people. Uh, all right. It sounds really good. Well, in any case, let's Put get in your pancakes then. Oh, oh tequila right. pancakes? Now you're talking. Oh, that sounds amazing. Let's get to our contestant. We got Trevor on Whidbey Island. Trevor, are you there? I am. Excellent. All right, Steve, get out of here. Goodbye. For those playing at home, Trevor will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Trevor, you can yeah. ask all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Uh, I'm ready. Nice. In the Lord of the Rings, what two colors does the wizard Gandalf go by? Gray and white. Yes. Gray. Which paper towel brand has the slogan, the quicker picker upper? Uh, 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 not Bonnie, no. uh, Ah, uh, she passed. What year did Anna Ferris and Chris Pratt divorce? 2010? No. 2012? No. 2014? No. Albania is located on which continent? Uh, Albania. Pass. The medical term asymptomatic means without what? Uh, love? No. <laughs> you okay? Um, hot dogs. No. Okay. No. I passed. What decade was Google founded? 2000. No. 2010. No. 90. Yes. What color pants does pre- uh, Peter Griffin typically wear? Green. Yeah. And Trevor gets three correct. Hey. All right, hey, not Trevor. bad for my first time. Hey, not bad, it's your Trevor. First time. It's not good for your first time either, but it's not bad. No, it's horrible. But well, it's I mean, horrible. no, horrible is like the goose egg. You didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, Colin scale on this one. Yeah. 
So I tried. I tried. <laughs> yeah, you did. But you know what Yoda says, man. You got to do no, it. No, I got three correct. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. spoiler alert. No, I did oh. terrible. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> First text I see says, this guy sucks. Well, wow. He didn't do great. You know, the texters are so kind. Again, well, not that's the, the expert analysis we expect from the text line. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like our own Chris Collinsworth. Steve, are you ready? Yes! 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 In the Lord of the Rings, what two colors oh, does... In the Lord of the Rings, what two colors does the wizard Gandalf go by? White and black. No. Blue and green. No. <laughs> nice. Uh, pink and black. No. Which paper towel brand has the slogan, the quicker picker upper? Bounty. Yes. What year did Anna Ferris and Chris Pratt divorce? Ooh, that was a tough one. Um, I'm going to go 2017. <laughs> no. 2018? Yes. Albania is located Albania. on which continent? Uh, Africa. No. Antarctica. No. Europe. Yes. The medical term asymptomatic means without what? Symptoms. Yes. What decade was Google founded? Ooh, 80s. No. 90s. Yes. What color pants does Peter Griffin typically wear? Green. Yes. The ventricles are the lower chamber of what organ? The heart. Yes. Botulinum toxin is commonly referred to as what? Botulism? No. Oh. Boogers. No. You. Uh, dandruff. No. Who plays Captain America and Captain America the First Avenger? Chris Evans. Yes. And Steve, all the time, you win eight to, well, three. You already knew that, though. All right. Sorry about that, Trevor. It's but, okay. All uh, right. You try again now, buddy. Yeah, you try, try again. again. See if you can uh, go get better. First game jitters. Based on his performance, it sounds like maybe he should like do the minor leagues first. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. To the pros. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> you know, do a stint in double A. Oh. Get yourself kind of work around there, you know, get your feet. Yeah. Yeah. Play some trivia game on a radio show in like Yakima. Okay. <laughs> and then work his way up back to the big time. Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I love that. He did get one that you did not. He did know that Gandalf went by the Gandalf the Gray and Gandalf the White. You were close, Steve. Oh, yeah. Dang it. He starts off gray. And then he uh, falls in a pit with a Balrog and then turns white. Yay! Well, man, I was going to watch it this weekend. Uh, you now I, don't. Yeah. I know you were not. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, botulinum toxin is commonly referred to as what? I don't know. We talked about this yesterday. Oh. Botulism? Botox? Botox! Botox. Wow, it doesn't, so it doesn't sound good when you use the word toxin. Well, no, because it's poison. Like, that's what it is. It's a toxin that goes in there. And Did they change the name because they figured Kim Kardashian would have a hard time pronouncing that every time she went to get it done? Quite possibly. Fair. <laughs> yeah. I think the only reason I kind of figured it out was because they mentioned that on House. Oh, really? The show House, yes. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I, 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 yeah, that, that whole Botox thing, man. I am so happy I am not wanting that. No, not at all. Uh, congratulations, Steve. You won. Good Thank job, you. Steve. Thank you, guys. All right, well, you know, we talked about all of our, uh, well, we talked about Friends a little bit earlier, and it seems like over the years, there's that one show that a generation just latches onto. It's a comedy. You, you got Seinfeld. You got mm -hmm. Friends. And, of course, then The Office is the next generation from Friends, in, in my opinion. And uh, Rain Office and Parks and Rec, I feel like. Where, yep. like those are like the, the, I think about shows that are quotable. like Or like, you know, at least the, the plot line comes up quite frequently. Seinfeld's one of those. Friends is one of those as well. And I always heard people quoting Parks and Rec, which yeah. is why I wanted to watch that. And also The Office as well. Yeah. Rain Wilson, of course, uh, very, very iconic character. Dwight, a uh, boy from the Pacific Northwest, uh, he was on The Office, and he just did an interview, and Rain said, hey, man, uh, he doesn't recommend that you pick him as your partner if you're ever in a trivia contest about The Office. I would fail at any Office trivia. I would be the worst. I watched every episode when it first came out. I haven't seen them since, and I can't even, people reference episodes like, I don't even remember shooting that. You know, and he's not the first actor I have seen say that. I remember I was in a really awkward uh, moment with William Shatner as we were doing the thing, and I brought up an episode that's a very iconic episode of Star Trek, and he just he looked at me with this look on his face like, I don't know what you're talking about. I can understand that. For a lot of, I mean, it's going to probably break some, like, super fans' hearts, but for a lot of these guys and girls, it's, like, just a job. Like, yeah. they're not... They're not obsessed with the office. They're obsessed with the paycheck that they got, I bet. But, like, they're not sitting back. Although, I'd be guilty of it. I would sit at home and watch my, myself all the time. <laughs> I'd be great at a trivia show about my show. There's a lot of actors that don't do that, Steve. It is really wild how many actors will say they have not even, like, at least Rain watched the episodes once. Some of them don't ever watch it at all. True. 
Well, and you say that. However, we are cu- we have our shows posted online every day. When was the last time you went back and listened to one of our podcasts? Oh, every day, Danny. Yeah. I have a drive in, yeah. I, have a, I drive home listening to it, oh, and yeah. I drive in listening yeah. to it. That's a lot. The sound of his own voice <laughs> makes him. Damn it. Don't bring like good points into this hot conversation. <laughs> I'm oh. just saying because I think the same thing. Like sometimes, like you'll meet a listener and they'll be like, "Oh, do you remember that one time you said that?" And I'm like, no, "I didn't. I did." Yeah. And then they like like they tell me the show and stuff, and I'm like, "Oh, yeah, I like yeah. beer." <laughs> no, that's 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 true though. I mean, but like on the flip side though, like with music, uh, there's so many artists out there. And maybe if I was ever like successful at music, I'd be this way. But a lot of these bands, like they'll be interviewed about their and like honestly, after we finish recording the record, I never listen to it again. Yeah, because they play those songs so often every night. But they like just where I'm on the flip side. Any record that I've ever recorded, I'll still listen to like my old band's records. Sometimes, like you know, driving or whatever it may be, because it, it triggers some good memories and also just like I, I, it's a it's a time capsule in my life. But for most musicians, they they just constantly say, "Oh yeah, I never listen to my stuff." Whereas I'm the idiot that's like, "I listen to it all the time." What do you want to know? What's even more bizarre too is like the people that like the songs that they write for an album that they never play live, mm-hmm. and then like they're gonna like do like a full album uh, show or something, and they're like, "I had to go back and relearn that song." I'm like, "How do you forget the song?" I remember songs that I wrote when I was like 13. Right. Again. I suppose when you're those guys, you know, and, and and you've been doing it for a long time, like how many albums have you done at, at that particular band for either one of you guys where they have done a ton or even maybe other bands have been in? I always thought the deep cuts they'd listen to, though, like the ones they don't get to play all the time. I feel like maybe that might be, they might be special to them because they don't play them that much. So maybe they wouldn't mind hearing a while because they're not heard by their own ears. That much. Or maybe they're just like, I can't believe that this song is not popular with our fans. So it makes them in a more angry. Oh, movie. yeah. But, like, when we interviewed Stone Gosford and had him on before, he was quick to say, like, oh, yeah, right before tour time, you know, I have to go out and buy our records. Well, now I'll probably download them. Um, but he has to go and track down his old records to listen to the songs again to remind himself how to play them because he doesn't remember certain songs. And he's like, oh, crap, we're about to go on tour. I need to remember how to play Even Flow. And he'll just sit and listen to his own record and play along to it so he can remember how to be uh, the guitarist of Pearl Jam. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that, I mean, it does make sense. It does make sense, and you know, maybe the big fans play. But yeah, if you're if you're working at something, mm-hmm. how, you know, how are you supposed to remember all these things if you haven't revisited it in what four or five years? But how bummed are you if you're like a super fan of The Office and you come up and you're like, oh, I remember when Dwight did this, and he's just like, I don't remember. Yeah, I, know I don't remember what I had for lunch yesterday, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, it was embarrassing for me. It was awkward because I was I was like on a roll, and then I'm in, and, and it was a live. So we were, we were doing a, a filming for a TV thing, and I was just like, okay, <laughs> you can just see I was crestfallen. I'm like, all right, William, well, get out of here then. One texture says, uh, of my many years of being a musician, I recorded a few albums. I never go back and listen to them. Once they're done, they go on the shelf. See, for me, I think I'm the only one that's going to listen to it, so I, I listen to my own you, stuff. You want to make sure it gets some spins. Yeah, 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 you really do. Yeah, I want that yeah. penny from Spotify. That's what you want. <laughs> Even though I use Apple Music. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck. Well, see, there's your problem right there. See, every night I go to bed, I just put my records on repeat. I'm hoping I'll get some kind of royalties. Yeah. So well, it doesn't happen. <laughs> you keep doing it, buddy. Someday, man. We better do it on Spotify, though. Uh, what do you think is the most embarrassing thing that people from Washington State are Googling? Well, you know I'm going to tell you. We'll do that at 717 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. So someone looked at Google Trends and found the most embarrassing thing that each state Googles more than anyone else. And uh, for Washington State... Uh, I don't know if this is embarrassing because some people think this is real. But uh, people Google this a lot, and I guess to the rest of the country we look like fools. But it's a Washington State, Pacific Northwest thing. Even may have been a mascot. What gooey are we? ducks. How gooey to cook ducks. a gooey duck. That was a mascot. What team was that for, Steve? I can't remember. That was uh, the uh, Tequila Gooey Ducks. Oh, yeah, uh, the Tequila Gooey Ducks. A very popular kid softball team. Yeah. Also, Evergreen State University. Uh, that too. Yeah, they're they're the Gooey Ducks. Yeah, they're, they're a swim team. They're called the Gooey Ducks. Oh, the swim, just the swim team, <laughs> just the swim team. Yeah. Anybody have a guess at all? What uh, what you know, based on the hints, what we Google that's embarrassing to embarrassing for us? Though some people believe this is real and used to be a mascot for a team. Twilight sexy fan fiction. 
Did you ever, did you really grow up here in the Pacific Northwest? I mean, yeah. I know that Twilight is based here. Okay, fair enough. And they are a creature. All right. Vampires. Danny, Some people you, think they're real. Yeah. All right. That's not what people are Googling. They're not Googling Twilight creatures. It's something that Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart is a actual real person. She oh. was not a fictional creature. Well, you know, it all depends on who you talk to. And I didn't know. It was Amelia Earhart. The pilots. Is she from the Pacific Northwest? I don't no. think so. The pilots? <laughs> yeah. Amelia Earhart was there for the mascot of the Seattle pilots. <laughs> you don't know that. I, I mean, she might have been, but they decided uh, last minute not to go with her. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, it's a team that we no longer have. How's oh. that for a... Oh. See, I was going to say the, the Dragons? Pilots? Oh, oh yeah! You're, are you trying to make me angry? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, angry dragon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before you gave that hint, I was going to say maybe because it's kind of embarrassing if you don't know what a kraken is. So maybe people are saying, "What is a kraken?" I, you know, I would be. I would imagine on Google, there's a lot of people googling what a kraken is right, right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? That, that's a fair. That is a fair answer. You know what, Danny? I like your answer. Steve Release is just a troll. The <laughs> yeah. Of course, we're googling Bigfoot hunters. You know, Bigfoot. So, 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 oh, so, yeah. So, yeah. Where Which, to go hunt for Bigfoot. Yeah. A lot of people get together on the weekends and they go sit in the woods looking for him. Yeah. Or her. Yeah. Hey, look, it, you know. Uh, it, it, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's a great way to spend a weekend just to be out in the, out in the wilderness. Yeah, I know yeah. some of those guys. And it's it's a good excuse to go camping and maybe maybe see something or at least buy a whole bunch of gear that may or may not work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine it's almost in the same theory of like why people go fishing so often. It's like, well, you never catch anything. It's like, well, that's not why you go. Yeah. You know, some people obviously are going solely to catch fish, but a lot of people are just going just to get the hell out of the house and just be one with nature. I, I know, and that's why my father never wanted to take me fishing for that reason. He's, He's like, like, I go fishing to get away from you. Exactly. <laughs> and and my, he and my mother, I knew, went back and forth. If you're going to have a day with your friends, I want to have a day off, too. You're taking little Big Mouth with you. And, yeah, well, that, <laughs> that happened maybe once. And then my father and his friends were like, this kid is not coming ever again. What an endearing nickname for you, though. Little, little Big, Big Mouth. Mouth yes. well, little Big Mouth scaring the fish again. It fit. Yeah. And scaring the serene nature of what they were supposed <laughs> to be doing, just chilling out, having a couple of pops. And, uh, you know, no. So that was embarrassing, Googling Bigfoot hunters mm-hmm. for Washington State. But I'd like to point out Danny's state uh, oh. and their embarrassing Google search because I think this is fantastic. Is it why do we like Dion's pizza and uh-huh. full well it's terrible pizza? That was number two. <laughs> How to make blue meth. This one I know Danny has done. Not you. Oh. Can you throw a pizza on a roof of a house? Oh. <laughs> that, you know what? That's a fair one. Actually, this one is, you'll never get this one, but I know Danny has done this. What's that? Googling Justin Bieber nudes. Yeah. Wait, that's popular in New Mexico? That is the most popular Google. Google search is is Justin Bieber nudes. I'm actually also, not surprised by that at all whatsoever. It's also popular in Puyallup. I don't know why, but apparently oh. a lot of people in Puyallup are doing the same thing. Well, I mean, it's Puyallup in New Mexico. How about that? So those is Bieber are, popular in New Mexico? Is he from there? No, not at all. I, oh, I, sorry. He's from, he's, no, he's, he's from Canada. Canadian. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He's Toronto boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, I don't know. I don't. I just imagine I that there's that. a lot of pop stations there, and I I know he's like a big deal there, and he's never been to New Mexico, like in terms of like a concert. So his dong has never been there either. Right. So maybe people just want to see it. <laughs> it's so bizarre that that's New Mexico. Like what about New my Mexico? home state, New, New, New York? Sta- New York. Velour tracksuits. That's not <laughs> stereotypical at all. Nice. Not we like should, my, yeah, yeah, we should have show tracksuits. I would love a velour tracksuit. Oh yeah, I'm ready for that. You Crushed know, I'm velvet. You guys, let you say the word. I'll start wearing them. They're comfortable as <laughs> all hell. I remember one time going home, and it was. Uh, <laughs> People would pick me up. I think my friends thought that my family were in the mob because a couple of people, like friends of the family and family, picked me up and they were all wearing velour tra- tracksuits yeah. of different colors. That's and they amazing. like and they had like the gold chain and the white tank top underneath it and the slicked gray and black hair, depending on which person. You know, I was like, "Hey, Uncle Patty, what's up?" <laughs> it's like, "Oh boy, isn't that? Isn't that? Yeah, this looks it, like the, yeah, the yeah. Gaudis just came and picked it me up. Surely does." I can it, see that. Yeah. Velour tracksuits, the number one Google thing. What about your area? This is something I would never guess. And I don't think anybody would guess this from Massachusetts. Will Smith rap is the most Googled I, thing in Massachusetts. I don't know why you'd be embarrassed by that. I mean, I figure it'd be like Pennsylvania or California would do that because of the song. Yeah. And no. <laughs> he doesn't swear in his rap songs, does he? Does he ever sing about Massachusetts? I have no idea. I would never have guessed it. No. And you need and Wild Wild West is not about Massachusetts. No, it's not really. No, it's not. And you bring up Pennsylvania, and you know what? You would think it would be Will Smith. It is about another mu- uh, 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 a set of musicians, but it's not Will Smith. Which Bee Gees member is alive? 
Oh, you're getting close, though, as far as maybe what some people might think, even though there are people that love the Bee Gees, but other people th- they think that they're a corny band. Are the Jonas Brothers really related? <laughs> you're getting closer. <laughs> Oh my Pennsylvania God. is Nickelback concert is the most Google thing in Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, we want to go see Nickelback in the city of brotherly love. That's what it is. Yeah, I don't understand why Will Smith rap shows up in Massachusetts. Valor Seuss, of course, tracksuits make sense for New York. I've actually found out, I guess back in March of this year, uh, apparently there was a, uh, how do you say, Worcester? Worcester. 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 Well, whatever. There's a rapper from that area named Joyner Lucas who released a tribute song honoring uh, Will Smith's career work. Oh. So if they're looking for Will Smith oh. rap, they're probably looking for that. Oh. A rap about Will Smith, not Will Smith rapping. Exactly. And it's called Will. Oh, okay. Well, that now that makes much more sense to me. Wow, that was that had to be really popular if that dude from Worcester had the whole state searching for that. That's pretty amazing. All right. Well, there you go. That is uh, pretty much the most embarrassing things that each date Google more than anyone else. And we're wondering, okay, what about you? Okay. What are you into that you probably should be embarrassed about? But you know what? You don't care. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. What's that one thing that you're into that you should be embarrassed about, but you're not? You call us your text after Audio Slave on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. What would you do if your wallet or purse were stolen? Have you done a wallet audit? Make a list of all the items in your wallet or purse. If you have automatic payments associated with the card, make a note of that as well. Keep the list in a safe place at home so you have a list of everything you need to cancel and replace. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Switch to Farmers and you could save an average of $437 on your home insurance. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Based on average nationwide annual savings survey data July 2020 to 21. Underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Products not available in every state. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. We got the list of most embarrassing things that each state Googles. For us, it's Bigfoot Hunters. And for Steve's home state of New York, it's Velour Track Suits. I'm proud of that, actually. Very, very proud. We're wondering, how about you? What is the one thing that you are into that you probably should be embarrassed about, but you don't care? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. First text I see. I listen to this really stupid radio show called BJ and Migs. Nice. Nice. Oh, wow. Thank you. Okay. Somebody says, I should probably be embarrassed by my love for the Power Rangers. But I'm not. I have tattoos. I have all the seasons on DVD. Yeah, you know, it's a mixed bag with the, with what people think of the Power Rangers because a lot of kids grew up and loved them and thought it was a great show. But now it seems sometimes it's a, a source of shame if you're, you know, that kid that's now an adult. It's not that same way for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but it is with Power Rangers for some reason. Says who? I think that I haven't heard any hate for the Power Rangers on the, like where like turn, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are considered better. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, you have. Oh, I think I think a lot of people think they're the the, the turtles are better. Who's a lot of people? Well, I mean, just, you know, in the, in, I would say in the communities that I've seen that people just give a lot more love to... I, well, I, I just you hang with the Ninja Turtle community way more than the Power Rangers Oh, Ranger that's community. what it is, yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I just, I see more, I hear more love for the Turtles, and I feel like they're more popular, but am I crazy? I mean, don't get me wrong, I think Power Rangers just want to be Voltron, but that's just me. Whoa, buddy! Wow, now see, again... That's a hot is, take I can't this abide. Is, this is what I'm saying! Hey, it's right out there! I have swiped right on a guy wearing a Power Rangers suit on Tinder, and uh, I have never swiped right on a guy wearing a turtles like a ninja turtles or voltron so oh, you're a, oh you're a hater but if they show you that turtle then i uh, <laughs> then you're okay with oh dear it. oh that well, depends where is it dressed up as is the turtle itself dressed as a power ranger then i might be interested and i didn't feel like i'm an authority on it because i could speak on behalf of it because i was the black power ranger in college on a halloween party oh well yeah well then you can't speak on it. yeah you are an authority. the best part we got like kid costumes because that's all they had oh no so we had to cut them to make them fit because we're all grown adults except for our buddy john galley he he's like five foot one and he wore the kid costume one and it fit perfectly and the entire night our whole night was just us making fun of him the red power ranger just non-stop but like how's that costume fitting you and he's just like shut up you guys yeah. I, I all of a sudden had like scissors and had to like try and make it work he just puts on and we're all like it fits you great yep Aww. oh well that's the good Shockingly, thing though. they didn't have adult costumes for the they power really didn't no that's yeah. a bummer yeah 
206-421 Rock Texas at 77999. We got a list of the most embarrassing things that each state's Googles. Uh, how about you? Uh, we want to know what's that one thing you're embarrassed about that you're like, all right, I don't care if people think this is something I'm into. I should be embarrassed. Everyone makes fun of me because of my giant onesie collection. I have multiple characters from Toothless, Stitch, Pikachu to just regular onesies that look like just big kid pajamas. And I'll wear them to the store. If I already have them on and I have to go to the store, I'm going to wear them to the store. <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, wearing them around the house, I can see that. But yeah, seeing you outside wearing them, like, what is going on over here? I even had like a party where I went to the bar and did karaoke in a onesie. Oh, and Actually, oh, I think that nice. was the night your two kids got real drunk. And I think Joe broke a glass. All right, Joe. So it was funny watching Toothless trying to bandage up drunk Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, it is. I mean, it's I, maybe because of your size. I always think like you still look like a little kid. But I mean, I don't know. I feel like if Steve started wearing onesies to the store, I don't know how that would my like, brain be like, what is going on over there? I want to get a Chewbacca onesie. I really want you to get a Chewbacca onesie. Yeah, that would be hot, though. I mean, hot like... Oh, like, oh like sexy? Yeah. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I mean, that would, yeah, that would be too much. Sexy thing. Chewbacca. It yeah. throws people off when I'm at the store, like Fred Meyer or something, and I'm walking around with like a bottle of whiskey and like a six-pack of cider or something. They're like, why is this little kid grabbing all the booze? <laughs> well, it's always funny when we go like to the airport and you have your Pikachu or thing. Stitch. That. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's like, we're all like, I, I feel like other people that are in the airport are looking at us, looking at you like, are you being kidnapped by these weird adults? Because it's just I mean, you with all of us weirdos and you're holding a stuffed animal. Yeah, she looks yeah. like a child when she travels. She's got this gigantic stuffed animal and she's smaller. And then you turn around and you go, well, that's an adult face. Wait a second. Yeah. Wave sh- uh, Stitch's hand if you're in danger, young okay. girl. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm blinking twice. I'm in danger. I'm with these weirdos. I love New Jersey's thing that they Google, and it's it, it's just so funny. They they Google Ouija board, but they spell it W E E G E E instead of the proper spelling, which of course is you know O U I J A. I can see that New Jersey's just like hey Ouija we G yeah. Hey, how you doing? No, I want to spell it. Let's see. So W E E G E E. Yeah, that's it. Ouija, and then put the board in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet it comes up. I mean, they probably go, "Oh, for you, New Jersey folks." No, it hey, doesn't. Dear, dear New Jersey, you yeah. are dumb. Yeah. That's Ouija awesome. board. Yeah, the kind of first thing that comes up is the Ouija. Yeah. So, well, yeah, it's a lot easier to spell. Yeah, you're right. You know what? <laughs> Here we are knocking them. I'd spend, I had to, like, Google search how to spell Ouija before I even Googled Ouija board. Did you, oh, funny. you put Ouija board? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I just put Ouija, and it's some photographer, like, who died in the 60s named Ouija. <laughs> oh. So I was like, I guess you got to put she the, took great pictures. Yeah. You got to put the board there. <laughs> 206 421 Rock Texas is 77999. What's that one thing that you're into that you probably should be embarrassed about? So it says, I consider myself a guy's guy. I drive a diesel truck. I own a construction company. I love guns. But for some reason, and it's stupid, I'm addicted to The Bachelor. I don't really? Want- I, like, which, I like the version when it's all the girls trying to get one guy's attention. You know, I, um, I can watch that version. That, I, That's The Bachelor, right? That is The Bachelor, yeah. I can't watch The Bachelorette. Yeah. I just can't watch 30 dudes, like, <laughs> just trying to, like, impress a, one girl. Yeah. And for some reason, they're just annoying. You know, it's just... Well, that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, because, uh, you, you know, it's really, it's it, supposedly, it's what does she want in a man, but we can appreciate, well, we know we want in a woman, and, you know, and there's that guy, just, you know, let's see, well, we we, we know it more like, like a lot of guys want, let's see what he wants. No, it's not even that, BJ. It's just that I could tolerate looking at 30 hot chicks as opposed to 30 oh, hot dudes. Fair enough. It's a lot simpler than what you're trying to make it out to be. Well, you're saying it's simpler than, but I said it the same way, because yeah. guys are all about, let's look at the hot chicks. And that's, that, that makes sense. You and know, your like, daughter's in the room. Oh! Seven. Have you seen Bachelor in Paradise real quick? Because that's all the rejects of Bachelor and Bachelorette. And they no. come on one island and all try to like mingle with each other. And they call that Paradise. They call it Paradise. <laughs> it is an S show because it's like they all just get faded on this beautiful island together. It's You'd, you'd like it. Okay. <laughs> They're in bikinis, I imagine. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. But I think I might have to move to New Mexico because I love me some Justin Bieber. <laughs> I don't think I realize that you're you're into Justin Bieber. I am a believer. I am. What? Yeah, I used to be embarrassed about it, but you know, a few years of loving him, I was like, screw it. I'm just gonna let my believer out. 
I really, yeah, he was going to come last May. I was going to go to his concert, mm-hmm. but then of course got canceled. So hopefully he's going to reschedule. I feel like he turned the corner when uh, all of a sudden he started making like his handlers and his, his entourage carry him to the Great Wall of China. That's when I started <laughs> to respect the guy. Right. It's like, okay. Right. He's using his celebrity status for good. Yeah. Exactly. He's going through a little like, he kind of looks like a crackhead right now, but I'm still kind of into it. That bleach blonde hair. I don't know. I like it. Is he still got the mustache? Yes, he does. Yeah, it's a look. But, you know, it's still tap it. It's a look. It is a look. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we were worried if you were going to still tap it. Yeah, yeah. I Thanks. so <laughs> was. Yeah, Glad yeah, to know that you still well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're Thanks welcome. Thanks for that info. Yes, that was really impressing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. One person just said, uh, stepmom porn. I don't even like my stepmom. But it's my go-to, though. <laughs> It'd be, I think, more awkward if you liked your stepmom and were into that porn. I, I, you know, this topic has devolved very quickly. Yeah, it's very, very. Okay, well, you know, I think we're good. Your father's never home for me. Yeah. What do you need for me? Okay. I I feel like he's going to rail his stepmom. You're not going to tell my dad, are you? Yeah. I'm telling you, he's going to rail his stepmom. Okay, oh, he has a stepmother. Sounds like he's open. Yeah, he has a stepmother. Oh, yeah, he, oh yeah. yeah, the texture's yeah. going to rail his stepmother. No, he's not. Oh, I guarantee He it. just likes the visuals. Uh, come, uh, come on. I mean, uh, counselor, I, we just showed you exhibit A. He's got a stepmom, and the first thing he's into is stepmom porn exhibit B. Or maybe he already has, and he just went bad, and that's why he doesn't like her anymore. He's got to cleanse the pile by watching other stepmom yes. and son interactions that went well. That's not a better scenario, but okay, yeah, I'll really go with no, it. No, I mean, no, it doesn't no. make him look better, but I'll take it. All right, so uh, Star Wars and Star Trek, they went to battle over a tomato. You're going to hear what happened at 747 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How much does bankruptcy cost? Usually with my office, we we do a flat fee that includes all your court costs, filing fees, credit counseling, credit reports, and one cost in Chapter 13 cases. That usually starts at about $900 uh, with Chapter 7 cases. So total costs, including all your court costs, attorney fees, is usually about $1,500. We offer payment plans on Chapter 7s. You can start a file with my office for as little as $200. You can send your creditor calls to us. We'll take your creditor calls while you get gather up your information and, and pay, make payments on the rest of the fees. But Chapter 13 cases, uh, we can make payment arrangements in most cases as well and get your case filed even sooner in a Chapter 13 case because of the reorganization aspect to it. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Many of us face a financial crisis at some time in our life, but who do we turn to for help? Promises to eliminate any portion of your debt or legitimate credit items should raise a red flag. A good place to start is the National Foundation for Credit Counselors, or NFCC. Visit nfcc.org. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit kiswcom BECU.